specific applications in space biosciences will benefit all humankind indefinitely while also leading to new discoveries and applications of precision and personalized medicine. With me is the CEO of Vector Biosciences. Vector Space Biosciences. Vector Space Biosciences, Occasion Frank. So great to have you here. What a fascinating company and industry. I guess just what is space biosciences? Explain that. Well, uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, I would like to explain, first off, that we're probably not going to establish, well, with 100% with certainty, we're not establishing a lunar base, we're not going to Mars if we don't understand how to protect and repair the human body during spaceflight. Mm -hmm. And that's what we work toward. We work on countermeasures, understanding countermeasures like maybe drug repurposing or drug development, drug design, but also understanding the stressors like radiation and microgravity that can impact human health during spaceflight. So if we understand how to create these countermeasures, maybe repurpose drugs as mentioned, and then apply those to maybe areas of precision medicine, it's not just about benefiting you know, astronauts or billionaires in space, but developing new therapies in precision medicine for everybody on the ground. Yeah, so you can take that research that you've done bring it back to Earth and maybe apply it to? Yes, uh, it's very similar. M most people have heard of the drug Keytruda, yes. developed by Merck. Mm -hmm. Well, just so happens, the reason that drug is so effective today is because they launched experiments on the ISS over huh. a period of years. Interesting. Bristol Myers Squibb is doing the same thing. Yeah. Explain your team and how are they qualified to study this and how the company's organized? Sure, so we uh, first we'd like to highlight our scientific advisory board. And we have got a variety of organizations, scientific institutions, such as Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, University College of London, Imperial College of London, UC Berkeley, City of Hope, UCSD, that's UC San Diego, and Cal Poly, of course, uh, where we construct and design CubeSats that are launched, biological CubeSats that are launched into space. And so our team is made up of scientists and engineers, and of course, all kinds of personnel that make all of this happen, including the, the registration with the FCC and the FAA and mm -hmm. NOAA uh, so that we can actually do the launches. Right. And then of course we have to have the scientific <clears throat> expertise to design the experiments or work with biotechs and pharmas to design the experiments and launch them. And then most importantly, uh, I would say maybe equally importantly, would be understanding the data associated to it. Mm -hmm. So we use language modeling, which is the tip of the spear in AI today, yeah. to better understand relationships between drug compounds and proteins and how they can benefit or protect the human body during space oh, flight. It's amazing how so many different industries are working together <laughs> for this. You got pharma yeah. and tech and space. And what would be the total addressable market with this? Well, it huge, but <laughs> I, let me just say it's a combination of artificial intelligence, which is analyzing the data, gaining new insights from the data, and of course, life sciences. So how big is AI? How big is life sciences? And now how big is the space industry going to be? And how big is space? Infinite, <laughs> right? So uh, humans will be populating other planets, starting with the moon. This is where we're all headed right now. It's the new space race, and it's never going to stop. So protecting the human body in space yeah. with benefits to everybody on the ground, the total addressable market is almost incalculable. Do you want to take a guess on when we'll be inhabiting the moon? Well, I would. <laughs> well, I, I, we almost don't have to guess uh, because NASA has plans on humans inhabiting the moon 2024. Uh, with Artemis II, the launch. Okay. Well, at least to scope things out, you right. might say. Yeah, okay. But uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, just within the next 10 years, we will have a permanent presence on the moon. How interesting. Um, are there other companies doing something similar? Well, you know, as mentioned, uh, we've got Merck and we've got Bristol Myers Squibb uh, understanding how to, you know, crystallize proteins or drug compounds because in microgravity because they become more effective. But you also have other small launching companies that are interested in launching payloads uh, related to biology. Yeah. Uh, but we don't have any direct competitors in that area. Uh, we have more along the lines of something that we, we'd like to call co-opetition. So. Okay, so explain the process and, and how you use AI to, I guess, synthesize this data that you get. Like, how does that work exactly? Sure, so uh, it's important to understand the divisions within our company that, that make this happen. We've got a biosciences division. We've also got a hardware and CubeSat division where the CubeSats are designed and launched. And then we've got an AI and language modeling division. 
So it starts with designing the experiments and working with the biotechs or, or pharmas or even materials companies to better understand how maybe a material might change under microgravity. But we're, our particular focus is biosciences, so when we establish an experiment, design an experiment, and then launch the experiment via a biological CubeSat, data is beamed back to Microsoft's Azure Space platform where there's a ground station that we collect the data, and then we can augment that data or add additional data and then apply a language model or a series of language models on, on top of that data, and then the real magic happens where you've got data interpretation, new insights, and maybe even novel discoveries that can occur once we visualize that data and help scientists interpret the data. Wow, so you are publicly traded. SBIO, right? Yes, Secu SBIO okay. is a security token. So okay, okay, so tell, tell me about that. So as a security token, uh, okay. it, it is a cryptocurrency. Okay. And this means that it represents equity of the company as oh. a registered security token. And this also means that it is a publicly traded vehicle as well, okay. but also with uh, what I'd like to call exposure to a truly global capital marketplace. And th that is the crypto markets. Yeah. And are, is it in a particular exchange? How can somebody find that token? Uh, yes, uh, we, la we launched it on initially on lbank.com. Okay. So you can find it trading there, and we do have plans on moving to Coinbase and Kraken and a few other big names. Okay, and any plans for any other types of listings outside of tokens? Well, uh, we are considering NASDAQ, mm -hmm. I can tell you. So, well, that's in our future. Okay. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. Well, very exciting, and it's exciting to think about the possibilities of what could happen with this research that you're doing. Oh, so. yeah, it's endless. Thanks, Cajun, so much. Thank you. Thank you.